Dear friends, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present my work. Uh, my talk is uh, COVID-19 Vaccine uh, Machine Learning Ontology Modeling and the COVID-19 uh, Vaccine KB. Yeah, I'm Oliver He uh, from the University of Michigan Medical School. So we all know uh, human coronaviruses uh, can make uh, some bigger trouble to the whole world's public health. And uh, we have uh, SARS-CoV-2 now, which causes COVID-19, uh, the pandemic. Uh, before it, we also have the SARS uh, or, or SARS-CoV-1 and uh, MERS. So uh, they all occurred uh, in this century, like uh, 2002 for the SARS, the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, and the most uh, Middle East uh, Respiratory Syndrome. So they had a less, prob less uh, problem for the nationwide, but uh, the mortality there actually is uh, even worse. But however, now we are really in the pandemic, the trouble of the uh, COVID-19. So I want to ask a question to you and to myself. How can we rationally design COVID-19 vaccines? And then how to model COVID-19 uh, vaccine knowledge uh, for AI and other things, right? So if you want to do some kind of AI study, how can we do it? And then uh, is there some COVID-19 vaccine knowledge base? Well, you know, there's one that I'm going to present. So first, uh, let's talk about uh, the uh, rational vaccine design. So first, I like to introduce uh, a background about uh, reverse vaccinology. So it's a concept uh, pioneered by Dr. Rhino uh, Rapoli, uh, the pioneer of RV. So for the RV story, it's basically uh, relatively simple actually, because before it, uh, we are talking about uh, Vaccine development is from a uh, well lab to well lab. And then for the RV, it's more like from bioinformaticus, then to vaccine design, then to well lab. So by doing so, you can save a lot of time, right? So the, the, the first successful story uh, is the Nyseria meningitis. Um, the um, vaccine. Um, Eventually, it leads to the uh, Novartis uh, vaccine uh, Bexera. So that project was led by Rhino. So the idea is to look for the secreted or surface protein and then see uh, you can do the prediction, right? Once you have the genomes, right, you can do the prediction and which uh, uh, bacteria are on the surface or secreted and then you can then test each of them. Then over the years, there are many more criteria available for the prediction, uh, like uh, you know, like a chance membrane domain adhesion probability, epitope for binding, and sequence conservation exclusion, so etc. And then, given those criteria, and we have developed the first well-based reverse vaccinology called the Vagazine. And then there are many other uh, reverse vaccinology tools available. Uh, here, you know, there are there are a few uh, most common um, tools. And then recently, last year, we developed something called the Vaccine ML. So ML means uh, so Vaccine ML basically, you know, is trained by manually curated the uh, uh, vaccine energy data. And then we propose something we call the progenicity score. So that, uh, that is to measure the protective energy. But all uh, uh, immune response you know, is protective, right? So you cannot see just giving a protein and it can induce some immune response. Then you see, oh, it's a vaccine candidate. Uh, no, we have to make sure you know, it's protective. And how to do so? You know, we can start from our manually annotated uh, uh, vaccine data, vaccine energy data, we can start from there, then we can do prediction. So we tested uh, five machine learning methods, and then the best method uh, you know, we found was uh, 
extreme uh, gradient boosting. So it's uh, uh, X uh, GB, and then also we develop some tool. So this one uh, shows, this is a new one packaging out a validation tool, and uh, we show uh, our project, uh, our better than ML uh, prediction method is very good. And then we do some uh, benchmarking uh, with uh, some other programs. And uh, indeed, we find that the Vagazan ML has the best uh, record, uh, WF1 and the MCC score. And the precision score is the second best. So the best one is the Vagazan itself. But the Vagazan achieves the highest uh, precision with uh, the suffering of the other scores, uh, especially the, the record. So this is the purpose to try to get the highest uh, precision. And then we use the method to do a uh, kind of prediction for COVID-19. And then we find S protein is indeed the best uh, uh, energy for COVID-19 vaccine development. It's, it has the highest uh, uh, vaccine ML score, and also it has a very good uh, adhesion probability. And we found that uh, ad adhesion probability is really associated with protect with the protection. So in addition to the S protein, we also found uh, a few others, like uh, the NSP3 and NSP8. Uh, they also have very good uh, vaccine ML score, and they are also uh, adhesins. And also we find uh, two other, like uh, two other proteins. They are also uh, good. They are also non-structural proteins, uh, uh, have good adhesin probability. The, the NSP3 a uh, little bit more, and we found uh, that indeed uh, can stimulate the very good T cell epitopes and uh, the MHC class 1, MHC class 2 epitopes, and also they can stimulate the very good linear B cell epitopes. And B cell epitopes, you can see the green, they are on the surface. And um, so we found. Uh, yeah, we have many other findings associated with NSP3, and we didn't have time to present. And then, you know, like after the paper was published, and then we found more papers talking about NSP3. So you can see, now you can see the NSP3, they have flown a well lab experiments to ensure it indeed uh, regulates uh, the viral spread and the innate immunity. And then the NSP3 itself can stimulate the waste strong uh, CD4 and CD8 T cell response, and it can uh, support the mediant of viral infection in the lung. It means the experimental results somehow at least indirectly support our uh, prediction. And then we also propose a so called uh, SP NSP cocktail vaccine because currently. So COVID-19 vaccine is very hard to, uh, you know, I got the S protein vaccine is very uh, efficient. However, it uh, may have some issue that uh, which reduce the productivity against uh, some mutants, right? And uh, so the proposal of including both uh, structural protein versus non-structural protein together, you know, are two folds. One is uh, you can have a complementary antibody response and a cell mediated response, and then you can reduce the immune escape or vaccine immune escape, right? So we can reduce the chance of having like uh, mutants that can escape the vaccines uh, we have. And then we also uh, recently generated something we call the vaccine two. So it's a well based uh, vaccine design program. It includes the previous vaccine and then the vaccine mail together. It has some very nice interface you can try. So it basically has also pre computed results and also you can do a dynamic analysis. You, know, you can put it, your data, your, your protein sequence, and we can do analysis for you. And then another one we have been doing is called uh, uh, structural vaccinology. So the basic idea here for the COVID-19 S-protein study 
is that uh, we separated the structure into three parts, right? The surface part, the core part, and the intermediate part. So you want to you know, make the surface structure about the same with the native one, because by doing so, you can maintain the, the BCL, the epitope, uh, BCL epitope unchanged, right? And then the inner part, you can actually change uh, the sequence so that you can have more epitopes, more like a C, more like uh, the T cell epitopes, you know, like uh, ready there. And then the purpose is to stimulate the more uh, T cell response. So of course, the results still require some experimental verification. Okay, so next I'm going to talk about uh, uh, ontology uh, first, and then see how can we can use ontology to do the modeling. So here uh, we show that uh, ontology indeed uh, is a way that it can integrate uh, clinical data, basic uh, science data, and uh, patient data all together into uh, magnetic disease classification and study all together. So it's a foundation of current big data and precision medicine. So we say ontology is a part of AI, right? So in AI, there is a knowledge present representation uh, and the reasoning uh, uh, field, right? So how can we see you know, you know, ontology support AI? Let's just give one example. So let's say there is a robot. So we are talking to a robot or AI. We say, okay, I'm a human. I got uh, COVID-19. Can you give me any medicine, right? So the robot will say, what? <laughs> so Robot, in order for robot to understand uh, you and give an answer, so robot needs to know the meaning of each word, right, and the relation between the words, and then should have some knowledge uh, build up and give you an answer. It's not easy. So basically, ontology is more like a computer interpretable uh, representation of entities and relations among the entities. So ontology is also known as uh, a knowledge graph. So it's a foundation of AI, right? So if I give you an ontology like this one, right? If I say, okay, COVID-19 uh, caused by the SARS-CoV-2, which is a virus, and the host of the disease is human, which is a mammal, right? And then we can see, okay, the cause, you know, like uh, of the issue or the problem, you know, occurs in lung and this, of course, Parts of organs, and then it can be treated with some drug, right? By by build up some tools like this, uh, then you can make it the uh, ontology kind of uh, uh, really computer interpretable, and then make uh, the uh, robot become smarter. So robot may may kind of better understand you and trying to give you uh, some good drug, right? So they may say, okay, yeah. Desivir is a drug, so they can give you the drug. But anyway, so this is a simple making ontology. And then the cyto is the coronavirus infectious disease ontology. So which is an ontology that we are developing uh, in the lab. It's a community effort you know, is to try to support the, the COVID-19 uh, representation and trying to uh, give some modeling, right, of the knowledge, like including vaccine and diagnosis and drug and uh, many other things. So this is a really kind of a very high level representation of the cytotopicus, uh, including gene, cell, human, virus, etc. So for the uh, sake of saving time, I'm not going to give you too much uh, detail here. And then here, I just want to give you how CYTO, or the yeah, CYTO is actually using another ontology that is called the vaccine ontology's uh, information here to represent uh, the, um, the COVID-19, like as example, like a Pfizer, uh, BioNTech uh, COVID-19 vaccine, right? So it is a, a messenger RNA vaccine. It uh, contains uh, the messenger RNA of S protein, which then can encode the S protein, which can induce neutralizing antibody or cell immunity. So we 
for the vaccination, we need to have an intramuscular route, and then it's made by the company of Pfizer company. So we can do all these kind of things and ensure that the computer can understand all this. So each name, they are back end is is the key so they can all understand, right? Make a computer smarter. Use it in many different uh, and we are trying to uh, use it for for different studies. Okay. Say um, by using the ontology, and we are also developing something called a uh, uh, COVID-19 COVID KB. So it's a COVID-19 vaccine knowledge base. So this is the website. Uh, so basically, we have uh, annotated uh, uh, about 100, like 97 vaccines so far. Uh, they are at different stages, like a preclinical phase one, two, three or authorized uh, vaccines. And then we standardize them using the ontology, like the site or vaccine ontology. And we provide some very good uh, uh, web uh, interface for user to explore, to identify the results. And we also looking have features of uh, uh, literature search or query for adverse events. And I'm going to some details uh, next. So in here, we give uh, a way to support uh, the uh, web query. So you can you can search uh, based on different keywords or or different vaccine type, and then you can find a lot of results, right? And then you can also do comparison. For example, you look for Modella and the Pfizer vaccine, so it can give you you know, some structured uh, uh, information so you can compare side by side. And also, you know, each uh, vaccine has the uh, so-called uh, VOID, right? It's a vaccine ontology ID. So you can click the ID and then you can link to uh, another website so that can dissolve and it can give more information about the vaccine. And we also do the vaccine uh, safety study. Uh, for example, in here, we have the, the vaccine safety query, like you query the Pfizer vaccine, and then looking for uh, adverse event, right? So you can see here, oh, yeah, we have a lot, lot of adverse events, like uh, uh, the headache or chills, etc. So, and then we can look, we can find that, uh, you can click the, the, the headache, for example, you can find uh, a lot of details for each individual case report. So notes that the, all the case reports you know, are downloaded from the CDC vaccine adverse event reporting system. So it's VAER system. And we did some further. So we can actually also do some statistical analysis on the results. For example, if we're looking for headache, right? So it can, now do three tests. One is uh, check the number of case reports, right? And, and then you can do a PRR test. It's called a proportional reporting ratio and a chi-square. And then you can use some chi some uh, criteria, right? Like uh, the minimum case report should be at least 0.2% uh, of total case, right? And then the PRR is more than uh, two and then chi square is more than four. By having all the uh, criteria filled up, then you can have to you can we can tell if it's significant or not. So in summary, uh, here in my study, I showed you uh, we can do uh, vaccine design like using the vaccine ML or vaccine or vaccine two now, and to identify the. Uh, potential uh, vaccine results. Here is to use all the uh, all the proteins of the virus, and then I show you we have the uh, cyto ontology and how we can use ontology to represent the knowledge of each vaccine, and then I show you the COVID nineteen uh, vaccine um, knowledge base and uh, how it can be used to analyze the data. And then, especially the vaccine uh, um, adverse event uh, from using the results from the 
CDC uh, VAERS database. Uh, for a simple discussion, we have the cocktail vaccine. So we think we really think that the cocktail you know, can provide a potentially a better formula towards a more effective and safe COVID-19 vaccine. Of course, uh, this uh, uh, proposal still requires uh, some experimental verification. So finally, I uh, want to say we have a lot of uh, people working on these projects, like uh, Edison Wong, uh, Anthony, Michael, Cook, uh, Philip Fang, Rohit, uh, etc. So, and also we have uh, uh, fundings uh, from NIH or, or local funding. Thank you very much. Yeah.